Here we are with question number two from our sample search questions for government information. So this question is, I was married in Tucson in 2008. On what day, month, day was I married? So this one's a little tricky, um, but we know from the lecture that the Arizona State Library um, has that list of different kinds of resources about which kinds of public records are stored where. So the first thing to do is go to um, Arizona State Library. I'm just going to pop that up in Google, click it out. That's how I actually navigate to it. And here we are again at the homepage for the Arizona State Library. Um, from the little overview that we had in our lecture, um, I know that we want to go into collections here, um, or sorry, branches, and I want to go into archives, and then I want to click on accessing Arizona public records. Pretty sure that marriage licenses and marriage information, like who's married to who, is an important part of the public record. So now what I'm going to do is scroll down to different kinds of personal records. Let's see, all right, so we've got births, deaths, divorces, um, driver's license, genealogy, marriage certificates. Contact the clerk of the superior court for the county that they were filed in. Um, marriage and divorce records prior, filed prior to 1950, that's not us, can be held by the Arizona State Archives depending on the county. Well, so we need to find out the clerk of the Superior Court for the county that they were filed in. So now we have a question because we know that I was married in Tucson. So what county is Tucson in? Tucson County. Click it. Here we go. Tucson is part of Pima County. All right. So now, going back here, I know that I need to go to the, the clerk of the Superior Court for Pima County. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and again do Pima County Superior Court. I'm just going to go ahead and click on their homepage. It is a very lame web page. It looks like it was created somewhere around circa, I don't know, 2001. Um, but apparently this is how we are accessing this information, right? Um, and we're looking at all these different kinds of things on the home, on the sidebar here. Juror information, well, that's not what we want. Self-service forms, meh, law library. So we scroll down here and court records. So that's promising, right? Because we know we're looking for public records. So we're going to go ahead and click here. And here we go. We've got the office of the clerk of the Superior Court. And lo and behold, there is a number here for marriage licenses, which seems to me to be the most likely place to record information about the date that I was married. Um, no, this isn't going on here. Hmm. Okay, wait a minute. We've got a record search. Let's go ahead and look. Um, if you agree to the information, click the link below to go to our record search page. All right, well, here we go. We're clicking. Now I have to prove that I'm not a robot. So A, Z, K, C, K, not a robot. And I have an ability to search. So um, if you knew me back then, you would have searched for my maiden name since you don't, you know, but since you know me now, you're going to go ahead and search for my last name and hope that that pops something up. You might even go, Laura, let's see if that happens. No, that didn't do anything. Now, one of the things that you might realize is that because you entered Laura Lenhart, it's searching for Laura and Lenhart. But if I were married, it's possible that I've taken, um, I took a different name. And so maybe we just want to leave Lenhart there. We're just going to try it like that. Um, oh, and we also want to search by the name, not the case number. Um, you can see what happens here because we're entering the name there, and we'll see. Your request is being processed. These are different case numbers, what we have here. And let's see. 
This one's in 2008. That seems promising. And we also see the name Laura here, along with Stephen James Linhart. So you click on there, and ah, as you look, the case number ML here corresponds to marriage license. So this is the marriage license for when I got married. Now, one of the things you want to be paying attention to is that the file date, this is the affidavit for marriage license. So this is when you go in and you say, hey, we want to get married. Um, and then there's the document, which actually says you were married on the 8th of March. Um, it was filed, that our, our marriage license was filed um, a few days later. It, the image is available at Courthouse. You can actually get a copy of my marriage license unless you go there and look at it in person. Um, but there you go. That's how you access someone's marriage license. Um, now let's go back here because I think when we, so let's go ahead and see if we did Laura Lenhart again because I think we hadn't clicked the name one when we did that. So let's go ahead and clear this search out. So we'll go back. Um, and we'll do Laura too and see if that pops up anything. This isn't going to give you any kind of information because there's no sample record for Laura Lenhart in marriage in the marriage license because my name has changed as a result of the marriage. So this is something that actually can happen a lot when you're navigating different kinds of government records. And one of the things to do if you sort of come back and you're using two different kinds of search criteria and nothing comes back, just delete one. See what you get there, right? Um, and of course, we're bringing up a lot more because there are a lot of people named Lenhart who happen to be in the system um, with the same last name. But if you scroll through, you can kind of see like different information. And you want to make sure that you're not just focusing on the like the party name, but also looking at seeing, you know, like marriage license. So, you know, right, we've got all these different kinds of kinds of information here. Um, and you can see here, Stephen James Lenhart and Laura Ruth Albritton. Now you know my maiden name. Um, so it's a little tricky to get into this piece of information because you only had a little bit of it. So you know that my last name, at least now, is Lenhart, and that could have been my maiden name or it could not have been. You knew that I was married in Tucson, so you were able to figure out that if I had been married in Tucson, then the marriage license would have been filed in the... Um, like with the with this like particular sort of superior like the clerk of the superior court, um, and so you kind of end up having to winnow down, and then you have to do a little bit of digging to sort of figure out and sleuthing to figure out like well okay, you know this is like like you know like that I ended up marrying a guy named Stephen James Lenhart, but if you hadn't been willing to sort of poke around um, and look more here and noticed the name Laura there, or notice that my middle name in D12, or my middle initial is R, then it would have been pretty difficult to find, right? Because um, it just happens to be whoever is sort of first on the, the court record. So even a marriage license, um, the party name, it'll only list the first. So um, it'll often come up, even if there's something else going on there. Um, but you may have to do a little bit of, digging, of of clicking around and sort of like digging in deeper in order to find the information that you're looking for when you're thinking about different kinds of court records.